to do that way. And then you can explain and also we can discussion. Uh, to the first one, Mary, please, you always go first. Thank you so much. <laughs> you on, <laughs> this, uh, Wake up everyone, okay? I'll, I'll do my best, okay. Uh, chap verse one is um, more or less an introduction chapter. So uh, it's, it says, having patience, I should develop enthusiasm for awakening will dwell only in those who exert themselves. Just as there is no movement without wind, so merit does not occur without enthusiasm. So this chapter, this sort of statement reminds us that generosity has led to morality, has led to patience, and now is leading to enthusiasm, which is joyful effort. And um, if you exert yourself, push harder, it increases your merit and brings enlightenment. And just as the wind moves trees and moves everything enthusiasm pushes you toward buddha buddhahood which is not that far away Great. Great. <laughs> you did it better than me <laughs> thank you so now then two uh Tom Wazerni, can you do the, the verses too? Okay. What is enthusiasm? It is finding joy in what is wholesome. It is oppo its opposing factors are explained as laziness, attraction to what is bad, and despising oneself out of despondency. Um, it's not only the definition, it's also the definition of um, in the context of what we're trying to learn. I can't really expand on, on that one, I don't think. Let me think about it for a minute. He's, um, this number two, he's still in the preparation mode, getting, you know, trying to um, uncover um, what enthusiasm is slowly but surely so it it actually sinks in and uh we get a foothold on um practicing the dharma more um or whatever our practice is for uh relieving um suffering and that's that's all i have to say mm. thank you you're welcome mm. so the first sentence is just uh recognize right what means like enthusiasm so enthusiasm so finding joy what is a wholesome so we are enjoy to going to do the wholesome deeds yeah the other just uh, last three sentences talking about uh, the appreciating factor uh, so enthusiasm Mm, then laziness, attraction to what is bad, this passing, this pondency. So that is the, the obstacle about enthusiasm. Okay, so anyone, okay, everyone, okay, the second. Great. Then go to third one. Thomas, please. Yes, Kim. Because of attachments to the pleasurable taste of idleness, because of craving for sleep, and because of having no delusion with the misery of cyclic existence, laziness grows very strong. Well, uh, the reason we have no enthusiasm, we, are, we all uh, want pleasurable things. We want fun things, good things, uh, things that are not really um, wholesome. And we like idleness, laziness, sleep. Um, 
to, to, uh, to have an antidote for this, we must practice the four thoughts of meditation to rid ourselves of misery of cyclic existence. Uh, Dharma practice to force ourselves, to free ourselves of some song. Mm. That's what I would say. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, number third is uh, the kind of a moral cause. So the number second is the result about uh, this pulsing, this pondency, laziness, attract, to what is bad, right? Yes. So that's all it actually arises from this number three, I think. Mm -hmm. The number three is more looks like cause, other one more looks like result. Yes. Okay. So thank you. Number three is okay, everyone. So then we go to number uh, four. Number four is uh, Amanda, please. Can you do the number four? Yes, yes, can pull. <clears throat> Enmeshed in the snare of disturbing conceptions, I have entered the snare of birth. Why am I still not aware that I live in the mouth of the Lord of Death? Um, so we have emotions, and emotions control us. And as long as this is the case, the death Mara is ensnaring us. For as long as emotions control us, the four Maras are there, and the death Mara will arrive soon. And the antidote is to meditate on impermanence. Uh, and the main point is uh, the reason why we don't have enthusiasm to practice the Dharma is because emotions control us. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Number five, Debe E. Okay. <laughs> Do I not see that he is systematically slaughtering my species? Whoever remains soundly asleep surely behaves like a buffalo with a butcher. And I was thinking about that, you know, the word is snare. And at, at that time, well, they're for, yeah, they're traps for animals. And they're so that you can eat that animal. And so that's probably a more you know, at that time, maybe a little bit more intense in terms of its meaning that we are, you know, your, your emotions are not only, you know, they're keeping you in cyclic existence over and over again. And so, you know, I live in the mouth of the Lord of death. It's not simply that, you know, I'm born now and I'm going to have this lifespan. And you know every second is getting closer to death, but you're stuck in that, you know, forever unless you get yourself out. And well, you know, a buffalo with a butcher again—that's people used to be closer to their meat, so you would actually see animals being killed, and so that would be very vivid in the mind of anybody that lived at that time. So that's really what I thought about with that. You know, we're being hunted down. Yama is hunting us down one by one over and over again. And we're not sufficiently impressed. I mean, not only do we know it intellectually, we know in our bones that we're gonna die and we don't know when, and we're not taking it seriously. We're not taking the long view of how many lifetimes do I wanna have before I you know, wise up. So that's what I got. Thank you, Debbie. Okay, so number five, okay, right, everyone? Then we go to number six, EDG. Yes. Okay. When having blocked off every escape route, the Lord of Death is looking for someone to kill. How can I enjoy eating? And likewise, how can I enjoy sleep? So what, what came through to me is Mara has placed obstacles on the path, on, on the path to enlightenment. And, and we, and we just, and we don't, we don't realize that there's, that, that Mara is at every turn and 
we're just, we're totally ignorant. We need to break loose. That's all I can say. Mm. So death mara is below the our road, right? Right. So then death mara ready to eat us, then why we are sleeping? No a word about that. Yeah. So that's a, it's a good example. A lot of animal has that problem. We see that. But actually Buddhas, Buddhists see us like it's like same as like animal, what problems? <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so now we go to the number seven. Debe B. Number seven. For as long as death is actually approaching, then I shall accumulate merits. Even if I then put a stop to laziness, what will be the use? That is not the time. Uh, so with number seven, um, the main point you said, Kempo, is we, we have to accumulate merit. And you gave the example like a deer eating the grass and the hunter is there just closing in. The main point was that enthusiasm um, does not arise and we, we do not put forth effort. Then like the hunter with the deer who's ready to shoot, we are like that deer and death is always there. So if we don't have an enthusiasm, we don't practice, we don't gain merits, we're, we're just like that deer sitting there waiting for death to, to shoot us. Mm. Okay, thank you. Number eight, anyone has a question? I think everyone great. Number, uh, oh, number seven, I mean the. No, oh. I did seven, that was yeah. eight, you're right. No, number eight, yeah, number eight is, uh, David. Uh, when this had not been done, when this been done, and when this only half finished, suddenly the love of death will come. And they, though we occur or no, I don't for. Um, What I wrote this morning, Kempo, is that death matter is a rise for everywhere, or everybody. It doesn't matter what are you doing. The, the, the death will come to you. I mean, that you have to be always aware that you have to practice. You know, you have to put effort and enthusiasm to practice because death will be all the way with you. <laughs> Mm. Until, until you wake up. Am I understanding, Kempo? <laughs> yeah, it's easy. That just the death is comes like any time. We don't know, so they don't wait to you. Or oh, your job is not finished, right? Yes. So they say, "Oh, your job is finished. I take you." Or that they, they don't say like that anything. So we don't know when it comes. Mm. Yes. Yes, so that's the reason we have to create a enthusiasm in the right now. Right so now. In this moment. When is the death comes. Yeah. That's uh, the interesting part, Kempo. <laughs> it can be any moment. <laughs> yeah. So then number nine. Thank you. Number nine. French glory. Can you do the number nine? Oh, you mean me? Yes. Um, okay. Their faces flowing with tears and their eyes red and swollen with sorrow. My relatives will finally lose hope and I shall behold the vision of the messengers of death. Um, it's just another warning that if you wait till the last moment, it's too late. Um, it's another example to urge, urge me to practice now, not practice later.
Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So then next uh, number 10, versus 10, Rodri for Martin, can you do the number 10? Yeah, thank you. Number 10, tormented by the memory of my evils and hearing the sounds of hell, in terror I, sh I shall clothe my body in excrement. What virtue can I do in such a delirious state? Uh, I think uh, the main point is uh, if, we, if we don't uh, get uh, enthusiasm and we don't practice, practice Dharma, uh, maybe should be later when when we when we are aware about uh, where 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 we lost or where we we could could do mm. something like that. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. Thank you. It's a uh, this uh, the specific the ten is uh, like who created no virtuous deeds. So then that person when read, ready to dissolution, then that time the person can hear this experience like lower realms. So then, then the person is really scared and nervous. But that time is like too late. What going to do? So another warning. Especially who did the, who drawing the stone create no virtuous deeds and humming for others in the lifetime, during the life. So when ready the dissolution, that time, the person has more experience in the lower realms. That's why they fear that scared for death, nervous, fear very strong. Okay, so now number eleven. Eleven gear Percy, can you do the number eleven? Gear Percy. Sorry, because I have two screens. I have you, and then I have the text, and so mm -hmm. unmute button is off on the side. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, now can I remain at ease like this when I have committed the actions that will bear fruit? Uh, in no, it's in living, in living gear. Oh, oh, sorry, eleven. Sorry. Yeah. Verses eleven. Okay, sorry. If even in this life I shall be gripped with fear, like that of a five fish being rolled in hot sand, why even mention the unbearable agonies of hell that will result from my unwholesome deeds? Yeah, it's again being um, uh, not enthusiastic and being, what was the word that we used that started with D earlier? Um, uh, despondency, Gail? Yes, despondency. It's another warning about despondency, another um, really visual aid of fish being rolled in hot sand, you're just like burning, 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 and flipping and miserable, and you don't have your water and everything. So um, that's nothing compared to the agonies of hell. And so that's going to be the result of my unwholesome deeds because I don't have enthusiastic um, motivation to um, renounce samsara. Mm. Thank you, Gear. So yeah, that's a live, live fish, right? Live fish. Yes. Like a live fish. They're so, flipping in the hot sand, like the whales that are beached, you know, those whales that everyone tries to rescue on, mm. the, on the sands. Mm. Okay, so then we go to number 12. 12 is uh, Ke Lidza. Okay, now can I remain at ease like this when I have committed the actions that will bear fruit in my delicate infant's body encountering boiling acids in the hell of tremendous heat? So it's saying, um, how could I practice Dharma after I die? It, after I've committed negative deeds and have to 
enter um, their fruits. There's not much chance to practice, so it's, it's um, more reason to practice now. Mm. Yeah, so like this uh, main point is like we don't have a passion like small things, then yeah. why then we create so bigger problems? Right. Yeah, the main point is like if we don't have really passion, any like heat and the cold or anything like no patience, then why we create this all the bigger problems, so hard problems, tormented heat. Okay, thank you, Lisa. So now we go to the then 13. 13 is, uh, go back to Mary, I think so. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Much harm befalls those with little forbearance and those who want results without making any effort, while clasped by death shall cry like the gods, oh no, I'm overcome by misery. So those who don't uh, have forbearance, patience, and those don't, they want the results, but they don't want to do the work will like the God realm people see death approaching and be suffering the uh, realization like the gods do that there's nowhere to go but down. <laughs> and that's, that's not a pleasant thought. And so it's frightening. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. That's everyone okay, right? That one. Mm, okay, so then we go to the number 14. Number 14 is a Tom Watson. Nee? Okay. Um, relying upon the boat of a human body, free yourself from the great river of pain, as it is hard to find this boat again. This is no time for sleep, you fool. Um, so without having a human body, it's, it's pretty unlikely that we're going to make any progress. Um, there are some, a few nice stories about animals who made a little progress, but without a human body, it's not much chance of that. So he's again saying, um, you know, wake up, no time for sleep get a grip. Um, I'll just leave it there. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so we have to use this body to for liberation. This body is not for use for the causes of suffering, causes of lower realms. You have to use for the go to the liberation. Otherwise, not easy to get. Mm. Okay, everyone, okay, that one, right? So then we go to 15. Uh, 15 ADG, please. Okay. Having rejected, having rejected the supreme joy of the sacred Dharma, this is a boundless source of delight. Why am I distracted by the causes for pain why do I enjoy frivolous amusements and the like? So the the first two sentences, the Dharma is 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 the is the source of happiness. And 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 if we reject it, then why do the why do the, the why do I let the small things bother me? I think is the total message. Mm. If I'm not worried about the future, why should I even be concerned about the present? Mm. Other than if I if I'm rejecting the Dharma. Mm. Yeah, we just me and Pong, this Shanti Deva say rejecting the causes of happiness, accepting just causes of suffering. 
right? right? You reject Dharma, that means like you then reject the supreme joy, you reject a boundless source of delight because that's always come from Dharma. Then why you just uh, create causes of for pain, suffering? Why do I enjoy frivolous investments and the like? So that is all is causes of suffering. Why you like that? <laughs> you said it so much more simpler than I did. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Idiji. Okay. So next, uh, uh, sixteen. Aminda, can you do the sixteen? Without indulging in despondency, I should gather supports for enthusiasm and earnestly take control of myself. Then by seeing the equality between self and others, I should practice exchanging self for others. Um, so I think this verse brings the antidote to these problems that we've created. Um, so first, um, indulging in despondency is the opposite. Amanda, your voice is gone. Oh, can you can you hear me? No, yeah, no, can you can you hear? Gone again. Yes, my internet connection is unstable. Mm. Is it is it better now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, so we, we bring an antidote to these problems that we've created. And so the first is um, first problem is indulging in despondency is the opposite of joyful enthusiasm. Uh, so we listen to Dharma teachings, cultivate, meditate with effort and joy. Um, I thought this was really good news because I, I thought, oh, every, you know, I, I can do this. Everyone can, can listen and cultivate and meditate. Um, and then we gather supports for enthusiasm. Uh, we practice enthusiasm. So to gather many different ways, um, uh, there are many different ways of gathering the accumulations um, through joy and great effort. Uh, so I think most important is, um, is what we talked about. And then we can use all these different meditations like um, uh, we use mindful alertness uh, to recall, we recall these other chapters and earnestly take control of, um, earnestly take control of my mind to stop creating the causes of suffering. And then we see the quality between self and others. We cultivate love, compassion, and bodhicitta practice. And then we practice exchanging self for others. Um, so when our love, compassion, and bodhicitta practice grows stronger, um, then, um, then I think our Tonglen practice is stronger at that time as well. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Mm, so now we go to the 17. Uh, DBA. That's the second time I knew you were going to call on me. So <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, I should never indulge in despondency by entertaining such thoughts as how shall I ever awaken? How the Tathagatas who speak what is true have uttered this truth. And then the truth is number 18. But, um, you know, I actually really find it helpful talking about despondency because it's hard. And as you've said many times, it's hardship. And so patience is for the hardship. And since each one of these paramitas are building on each other, then, you know, you have to look to, you know, whatever strength you've gotten through patience and through other things to get you through it can be a little bit depressing just because it's a, it is a lot of work and you're not perfect and life is difficult. And so I like that, you know, that he's identifying this can be a trap for you because it feels like it's going to take forever and you have to work through that. So that's what I thought. Thank you, Debe. Yeah. Debe, eh? Yeah, so. I have a question on that one. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to th think how to ask it. It's a. Uh, it, it, 
haven't, you know, there are times when you when you say, oh, oh, I'm so tired, I, I don't want to do that. And, and then you go ahead and do it anyway, because you know, it's good. So, so my question is, is, and I've had this, this question for a long time, I think is, what is it ab about us that, that, uh, that encourages us to make the right decision? Is this, is this, is a, is this a Buddhist, is this, is there a Buddhist version of free will? Uh, Do you understand the question? Uh, so which makes you mean the put effort you mean or? Yeah, okay. So, so there are there are times when I say, oh, I'm too tired. I don't I don't want to do that. And I say, but then I think, oh, that's good for me. So I do it anyway. Yes. And most of the time I feel better because I did it. Mm. So so what part of me was it that made the right decision? I think uh, just have a wisdom, maybe wisdom, <laughs> knowing something great, right? And uh, so right decision. Also, like we don't want the suffering, we want the happiness. That's that's the reason we 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 recognize what is the causes of our happiness. And that's why we make decision. Yeah. Also, we like we recognize that samsara is a suffering. So we're seeking for liberation. That's all the reason. Another reason we wanted to make good decision. Okay. So, so, am I making too much noise here? Okay. So, uh, so it seems like once you're acquainted with, with the dharma and you, and you start practicing the dharma, then then you're more apt to make the right decisions. But when we don't the more make good decisions. Okay, so now talking about uh, wisdom, if I go back 30 years ago when I was not involved in Buddhism, what was it about me that encouraged me to head in this direction? Well, then, was it free will? Well, and if, if you go back even further, you know, there, there's people that are born in, in the human realm and in, in the, end up in the Amazon, which don't have the, don't have the exposure to, to Dharma. So how do they progress? They were fortunate enough in their past lives to reach this existence. Think about the precious human body. So we talk about all this uh, uh, domain, Ten, ten freedoms, ten adornment. So then you you understand what they're happening. Even you born the human beings like you say Amazon or somewhere there, why they don't have these conditions? Because of that's that's already talked in the precious human body, right? In the precious human body. Yes, but that's where the question started. Yeah. So we have precious human body. That's why we have a connection. That's due to the previous life karma. Mm. Okay, so it's possible for someone in the Amazon to to reach the human existence and not be able to progress any further, right? They can change life due to the change life, or maybe the. There can could be a connection to somewhere else. we don't know. Yeah. Then you know, like Amazon there. Maybe some connection they also have, we don't know. Could it be experiences too? I mean, when you have the experience of a couple of times if you sort of push yourself to do the right thing and then you feel better after you have done it a few times well then you know that even though i don't want to do it i better do it because i will feel better um uh, that yeah well and this and yeah and what you're now i'm able now i'm making decisions based on the exposure to dharma okay so yeah it makes sense and but uh, experience yeah now it makes sense but but 
what was what was it that made me progress earlier 30 years ago that's that's my question probably your karma right Kempo? <laughs> i don't know <laughs> karma causes and conditions yeah but uh, i had all the right things coming in but now how how did i how was i fortunate enough to progress well, you get a good conviction somewhere there you know i'm sorry there's some conviction We couldn't hear you, Kempo. You were saying a couple of things. My phone is someone calling. That's what I think. Can you hear or no? It's a little foggy. Yeah, it's fainter. Yeah. Can you hear? Yeah, now oh, it's better. So my book is living within the computer. That's why. Okay, so the you get conditions. I think that's why. So I don't know the order, like what happening, right? We can research, like think about what is happening. Mm -hmm. Ed, I have a comment. Yes, please. There is a recognized um, reincarnate Rinpoche who was born into an Amazonian family of shamans, and his father was a Western allopathic doctor as well, training. And he actually started a center called Juniper Center in Palo Alto, which is modern Western Buddhism, <laughs> Vajrayana. So um, someone coming out of the Amazon has actually landed in California to teach all yeah. around the world. <laughs> so it might not just be you, it might be someone leaving the Amazon. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll look it up on the internet. It's just a question that's bothered me for a while. I, you know, I, I think I'm on the path now, and I wonder what about the people in the Amazon. How come they're not able to get on the path? I mean, they they're in the human existence, and so I have these weird thoughts. That's all. Well, the so. shamanic path is very popular too, so it's a different path. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We usually just talk about uh, we have a connection, so you know, karma connections like previous life due to connections, and then you get connections in this life. So that's why you are into the Dharma. Yeah. Okay, next week, 18. Gary Percy, please, can you do the 18? Okay, 18? Yes. If they develop the strength of their exertion, even those who are flies, mosquitoes, bees, and insects will win the unsurpassable awakening, which is so hard to find. So it's talking about um, your willpower and your um, fortitude in, in um, doing your practice and really trying hard to um, get off the wheel of samsara. So you must, must exert yourself and even, even non-humans, if they exert themselves, can, can, uh, can find awakening. Yes. So that means we are easy path. Yeah, we're on, on easy enlightenment path. Yeah. The reason is 19. Uh, 19. David, can you do the 19? Um, so if I don't know forsake Buddha Saba way of, of life, why should someone like myself who have been born in the human race not attain a work uh, awakening? since I able to recognize what is, the benefit, what is the beneficial and what is of harm. Yeah, it's followed by the just the yeah. yeah, that uh, what I understand Kempo, and I tried to wrote something this morning, but I don't understand it here. 
but that if, if, if we can be bodhisattva, if we can work in that direction. No, it's if you don't give up the way of a bodhisattva's life. Yes. If you give up the way of a bodhisattva's life. Then why should some like myself who has been born in the human? Why we can I cannot to reach the Buddhahood? Because if if if, if I don't be, uh, give up way of a Buddhist life, then I am human being, I am practicing, and I know the, what is the causes of happiness, I know the, what is the causes of suffering, then I can be enlightened man is easy. It's, it is in the, my hand, you know? <laughs> okay, we have the power to do it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Kempo. <laughs> Thank you. So now, verses 20, verses 20, Tho uh, Thomas, can you do the verses 20? Yes, Kempo. But nevertheless, it frightens me to think that I may have to give up, give away my arms and legs without discriminating between what is heavy and what is light. I am reduced to fear through confusion. This goes on, I guess, with uh, 19. That um, you can, you can enlighten. Don't say you can't. Think about it honestly, that uh, samsaric life is so much harder than the bodhisattva way of life. That the Dharma path is much easier to samsara. But we keep thinking, or we are, I guess, uh, confused that it's so much easier to go through the samsaric way not realizing that is the hard, hard path. Yeah, so this actually is, uh, we think about many people, we have this problem, see, but nevertheless, it is uh, frightening me to think that I may have to give away my arms. And so many people think I cannot do Dharma practice. This is so hard. This is like difficulty or oh, it's so hard. No time. So many people are not going to do Dharma. So, Actually, this dharma is always the worldly activity, worldly things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we it's see so that is this the same thing. Like your voice is breaking up really bad. My voice? Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, now it's a little better. Uh -huh. I see. Uh -huh. So I thought it's like your voice is breaking. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so anyway, this one is like, see, just usually people think I cannot meditate, I cannot practice, like so many like exclusive, exclusive like for practice dharma. Step broken up, right? A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. I don't know what happened this. Connection is correct. Uh, okay. It seems like people always come up with so many different reasons why they can't do yeah. Dharma practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to do the like go back and coming back in again. So I'm going to. You do, I don't think it's that Kempo. I think that um, sometimes Thomas, if I mute you, then Kempo's voice is okay. But if you're unmuted for some reason, then it gets a little bit um, oh, foggy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let me try that. Hang on. It's not you personally. It's just your <laughs> something. Okay. Now you can try talking, Kempo. Yeah. So now it's better. I don't know. It's like anyway, this one. So we, all the like our Buddhist people has excuse all the time. I cannot do, I cannot do this something like ready to meditate, ready to practicing, right? But actually can do, but they don't do. They do something more difficult to like worldly things, create the causes of suffering. <laughs> 
So that's why is some people say here, oh, I cannot do the Buddhist our life is so hard, you know, because they have to give up so many things. And actually, Shanti Deva said we give up more, more, more than that, samsaric beings. So, example is uh, coming more information. So we go to twenty one verses. Debe B, can you do the twenty one verses? Sure. And don't stay on mute, Thomas. You have great comments, so you can unmute. <laughs> I think it's just me. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, twenty one. For over countless, for over countless myriads of eons, I have been cut, stabbed, burned, and flayed alive innumerable times, but I have not awakened. So um, I think you mentioned here, Kempo, it, it sounds, um, in samsara over many lifetimes, um, it seems like that all of the things that we've experienced are useless, and we've been through a lot up till now. And so we've had all this suffering, but actually going back to your previous statement that the Bodhisattva's way of life compared to that is very simple. So these are kind of examples that we've already experienced. And so this Shanti Dave is kind of trying to develop our courage to say, listen, you've been through all those things. Doing this is nothing compared to everything that you've already had, all the suffering that you've accumulated over lifetimes. This doing this Bodhisattva way of life is really nothing. So it's a way of um, encouraging us to continue to practice. Thank you, Debbie. So now we go to 22nd. Liza, please, can you do the 22nd? Yes. Yet the suffering involved in my awakening will have a limit. It is like the suffering of having an incision made in order to remove and destroy great pain. Um, so I, I, the only thought I have about this is that difficulties are, are good and having an arduous life is is actually helpful for Dharma. And I think maybe suffering is part of healing and uh, it keeps you on the path. It keeps you co contemplating the defects of samsara and seeing other people suffering instead of just uh, mm. going through life and entertaining yourself. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah. So the main point is uh, when we, uh, you know, going into the spiritual direction, Bodhisattva's life, the suffering has limited. So then you go to the, 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 the then also like, like example, like if you, you put something difficult or hard, but that all is useful. So they remove really the cause of suffering and destroy greater pain, remove and destroy greater pain. So means like practice the Dharma, some you do hardship, but that actually help for remove and destroy great pain. So would an example of this be like um, the long ten rising mantra? If you uh, practice that and practice the noonday, um, it removes suffering that you, like if you, if you, um, just any practice of dharma or the dharma practice, you know, whatever oh. we just practice the dharma, whatever you get hardship put in the dharma practicing. So study, listening, cultivating, you know, practicing, whatever you do hardship, that helps remove the distro greater pain, suffering. Okay. So yeah. whatever you do. Yeah. Right. Okay. So now we go to 23rd. Modi for can you do the 23rd? Beep. Yep. Yeah, thank you. 23rd, even doctors eliminate illness with unpleasant medical treatments. So in order to overcome manifold sufferings, I should be able to put up with some discomfort. 
Um, I am not really sure, but I think uh, it is like uh, a comparison comparison with uh, like a medicine or doctor when a doctor give you a medicine. Uh, maybe it's discomfort, but it's it's useful for for us or something like that. Mm. Really yeah. Sure. That's a yeah, example, right? Example. So uh, if we just some discomfort to practicing Dharma, hardships destroy all the so many negative and noble virtues and sufferings. So we need uh, more passion, just means passion and effort. Okay, thank you. So now we go to 24. French Cabaret. Can you do the 24? Okay. But the Supreme Physician does not employ common medical treatments such as these. <clears throat> With an extremely gentle technique, he remedies all the greatest ills. So, Buddha's medicine is to watch your own mind, do the practices, follow the teachings, follow the Dharma. That will cure the sufferings of samsara and relieve the consequences of non-virtuous actions. That's a great medicine. Thank that you. Okay. Yes. See, that that is a gently technique, right? Yeah. <laughs> Comparing to the physician does. Com compared to surgery or bitter pills. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank so, you. Thank you very much, conference. So now 25, 25. Um, so who's the 25? So today we don't have many people. We're coming back again, again, okay? Mary, 25. Okay. Um, at the beginning, the guide of the world encourages the giving of such things as food. Later, when accustomed to this, one may progressively start to give away even one's flesh. So Buddha's uh, gentle techniques are start small, build it up, give food, recognize that, and eventually, if you continue on the Bodhisattva's path, you could even give away your own flesh without suffering just as you can give away a dollar to the guy at the corner. Yes, thank you, Mary. I have a comment on that. Okay. This one, this one really, this, this really helped me a lot. I hope I understand it correctly. It, when we were talking about this one, you talked to ability and capacity so that my understanding is if we, we start uh, start easy and work up to more difficult, it relates back to 20 even, you know? Even if I was to give away an arm or a leg, okay, right now I'm not able to give an arm or a leg, but uh, I, eventually I could work up to being able to do that. So my conclusion is, Please correct me if I'm wrong. My conclusion is, is the more we practice, the easier it becomes. Hmm. Is that a correct statement? Yeah, Mary, can you explain that? You can give really good information, Mary. I, I think that's exactly right. It gets easier as you go along. Hmm. Isn't that the way it is? I mean, start small and work up to it. <laughs> 
and the other thing that that uh, you know there's ten levels of a bodhisattva. So if we're if we're trying to reach level one, we're you know we're way down at the at the beginning beginner's level. Mm-hmm. We got quite a ways to go before we can give away an arm or a leg. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. you don't have to worry about doing that tomorrow. <laughs> That's so, what I say. so so when the kemp when the kempo when the kempo mentions a ability and capacity and also reminding us that we're talking about bodhisattvas here mm-hmm. it's really helpful when you do that so yeah. thank you you're welcome thank you adj sure. this one who can give legs like arms means like that must be the absolute truth of bodhisattva uh, so relatively true the bodhisattva is already shanti deva said that uh, i think already he talked somewhere that there is Buddha said, don't do. Mm-hmm. Mm. You could give blood in relative terms. You could donate blood or give a kidney to a sister or brother that needs it. Yeah, so that's great to do, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, okay, then it's because anything, just main point is like you have to use to and habit you at. And then one day you can reach the point. That time, then you have successful. Mm. Okay. So now we go to the where? Which one? Or is it twenty-six? Right. Twenty-six. Okay. Twenty-six. Tom Wazini, please. Can you do twenty-six? Okay. At such a time when my mind is developed to the point of regarding my body like food, then what hardship would there be when it came to giving away my flesh? Well, um, the way that it was translated, it kind of answered itself um, the question. So, um, So if we practice enough, then we'll have the wisdom at the right time. We won't have to think about it uh, when to give away an arm or a leg or something. It will be very natural and spontaneous. But until then, uh, we're advised to practice so we um, can develop that wisdom and compassion. Yes. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, so that is like say the actually answer of what for 25 and this give more clear answer. 26. Follow together. And so this uh, actually this section is uh, like practitioner Buddhist our realizers. So then they can do these things. So main point Shangdi Deva say you can do one day that no is no no need to rush, no hurry. <laughs> okay, so now we go to 27. Uh, ADG, can you do the 27? Sure. Having forsaken all evil, there would be no suffering. And due to wisdom, there would be no lack of joy. But now my mind is afflicted by mistaken conceptions. And my body is caused harm by unwholesome deeds. So we're talking about, you know, the end result is no suffering and and, uh, plenty of joy. So right now we're working on breaking ourselves free from samsara by working on our mistaken conceptions and and, uh, being better people in relating to others. In other words, doing wholesome deeds rather than unwholesome deeds. Mm. Practice more. That's... Yes. Thank you. So this is actually referring to the uh, absolute truth the Bodhisattvas. So this uh, absolute truth the Bodhisattvas, the having forsaken or evil, there would be no suffering. So there are, there are no suffering because the reason is a uh, this uh, evil is purified already. Negative is no suffering. 
and due to wisdom, so they understand the absolute truth realization, so there would be no lack of joy. So then they don't have a unhappy and a sad because uh, already have uh, wisdom realize. Uh, so we have the suffering and the problem because, but no, my mind is afflicted by mistake and conception. Our mind is followed by, controlled by emotions. So that's the reason. And my body is caused harm by unwholesome deeds. So this negative deeds harm our on my body. Means like we get suffering because uh, we, our mind is controlled by emotion and create negativity that uh, causes uh, suffering our body. Okay, so now we go to the- Does this one talk about, is it like temptation, like the Mara's tempting you to do something bad? Or is it just you've lost, you've fallen off the wagon and lost your way? Lost our way. Because uh, afflictive mistaken conceptions, right? Controlled. Okay. Mm. So now we go to 28. I mean, Dav, can you do the 28? Yes. yes thank you. Uh, as their bodies are happy due to their merits and their minds are happy due to their wisdom even if they remained in cyclic existence for the sake of others, why would the compassionate ones ever be upset? This is so beautiful. Um, it's talking about the way life. So these uh, bodhisattvas, they have good merit and their bodies are happy. They don't have pain or suffering due to their accumulation of merit. Their minds are happy due to their wisdom and they stay in cyclic existence to benefit others. Uh, they don't have any discomfort, pain, or suffering. Thank you. Yeah, that's also like absolute truth of Bodhisattva. So there has uh, this merit and wisdom, compassion, so no any pain and suffering. Great. Thank you, Aminda. Liza, next. 29. Okay. Due to the strength of his awakening mind, the Bodhisattva consumes his previous evils and harvests oceans of merit. Hence, he is said to excel the Shravakas. So, uh, the Bodhisattva has bodhicitta and practices the six paramitas. And um, so, and I think that Shavakas, they don't aspire to that. Is that what that means? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, the, this is uh, the power of a bodhicitta. Yes. So the power of a bodhicitta or the negative deeds is uh, exhausting, purifying. So creating accumulation merit, gathering accumulation merit. So that practice is, uh, you know, is uh, higher or unusual than shavakas. Yes. Hmm. Okay, so now 30. Debe B, can you do the 30? Sure. 30. Okay. So having mounted the horse of an awakening mind that dispels all discouragement and weariness, who, when they know of this mind that proceeds from joy to joy, would ever lapse into despondency. So um, really what this is talking about is bodhicitta and um, bodhicitta is the horse and that's the awakening mind. So when we when we get on the horse, then that would dispel all the discouragements that he's named above. If we maintain a bodhicitta mind, if we keep our mind in that state, then, um, the, then basically there would be no problem with uh, continuing our practice and we would find joy. 
and happiness in because our mind is in that state. Thank you. Okay, so now we go to the 31. 31. Debe B. Okay. The supports one working for the sake of living beings are aspiration, steadfastness, joy, and rest. Aspiration is developed through fear of misery and by contemplating the benefits of aspiration itself. So with the rest, what, I have a couple other versions to try and help us understand the rest. And I know you talked about it, um, but it was sort of letting go like, you know, I guess making a calm and tranquil mind and letting go is very often um, letting go of your anxiety to stop, stop worrying. Your mind is resting. Uh, you know, you're putting it in a, in a meditative resting state. So I think that, that was that. And then I actually thought this was hilarious because he's starting with aspiration. The first of these, he started with aspiration and he said, aspiration is developed through fear of misery. And I think that's really accurate. I think that we do need to be motivated for, I mean, by our fear of, uh, you know, we worry about not becoming enlightened. We should actually have a, you know, like a fear of not being enlightened and work harder towards it. Uh, fear is a really good motivator. And, um, you know, I know that we spend a lot of time dealing with, uh, you know, helping, Tara helps us with fears, but I think Shanti David is pointing out a really good, a, um, a motivation for renunciation, that if you don't do this, all you're going to have is suffering and frustration. So that's my thought. Thank you, David. So this 31, the main point is uh, talking about yes, this uh, antidote. Uh, disperse or discouragement, antidote to that. So we have uh, aspiration, steadfastness, joy, and the rest of four things uh, supports. So we have to the, take this. The first one is aspiration. So we have to develop through fear of misery. Uh, so aspiration actually remove the develop through fear of misery. Mm. And by contemplating benefits of aspiration self. Okay, so that's 31. Everyone okay, 31? Actually, 31 is going to more explain. 31 and 32 is more explain coming, each one. Mm. So now we go to 32, then 32. Mm. Amanda, can you do the 32, 32? Did you say me, Kimball? Yes. Yes. In order to, yeah, to abandon the opposing forces, ask sorts of aspiration, confidence, joy, and rest, and strong and self control. Um, 32 starts. Um, the section where we create positivity through joyful enthusiasm. Do these four things. We must abandon. What did you say? Your voice is cutting. Like we cannot hear very well. well okay. Should I try or should we? Uh, you try. Someone try. else. You can try once. Try, try again. Okay. Okay. So, in order to increase our enthusiasm, 
proposing so we uh, leads. Hmm. I think she dropped, Kendall. No, no, she can't be. I did. I did. Thank you for being so patient. <laughs> you come very, you come very fast. Okay, so no can you try again. Um, I'm not sure. It's, yeah, it's cutting. Sorry. <laughs> so Mary, try Mary, Mary. Can you do the thirty-two? Um, okay, maybe. <laughs> Thus, in order to increase my enthusiasm, I should strive to abandon its opposing forces, to amass the supports of aspiration, self-confidence, joy, and rest to practice in, er, in earnest and to become strong in self-control. So um, this is the start, as Amanda said, of the um, positive approach instead of the fear approach. So you increase your enthusiasm by um, abandoning what opposes it, okay? You, you met, you get support for your aspiration, your self-confidence, you become more joyful. The more you practice, the better it gets. And uh, you create these antidotes to the opposition you face to your um, practice and are able then to get rid of the things that are not useful to your practice and you become able to overcome the faults in your, oh, maybe that's 33, oops, okay. Mm. I think that's 32, all of it then. Yeah. You just develop more antidotes to your uh, oppositions, to your aspirations, self-confidence. Okay, so then we go to 33, Debe B. Okay, 33, yeah. is I shall have to overcome the boundless faults of myself and others. And in order to destroy each of these faults alone, I may have to strive until an ocean of eons is exhausted. And um, here it, it, it continued to explain the aspirations and using um, the two powers. And um, the first one was the uh, uh, this is a way of purifying karma and then you could purify other beings karma as well so through using the two powers so again this is going back to using the positive forces and working um through practice mm. well this is a power over aspiration right mm -hmm. yes oh yeah, a power of aspiration until samsara is exhausted. Right. <laughs> okay. well, we finish it there. Long so like, yeah. We, we live there, right, today? 33 is gone. Yes. Yeah, that's where we stopped. I see. Okay. So then. Anyone has any questions there or today, what we did? So which, uh, I, have, I have a question. I have a question. Um, I was a little bit um, unclear because the beginning of the chapter, you talked about the four antidotes being contemplating the four thoughts. Is, it, is that what we, I'm a little confused with the difference between the four antidotes and the four powers. No, this uh, four power is a lot of, uh, what is it you say? Four antidotes? Four yeah, but are the four antidotes in the beginning of the chapter, you talked about contemplating the four thoughts. It was first the part of the chapter we contemplated the first of the precious human life and impermanence. And I, I think the other part of the chapter that do the other two, but I, I didn't know the difference between the four powers and the four antidotes. How, 
So where does it say the four powers? Number 31. Number 31 says the four powers. Um, I thought the aspiration, steadfastness, joy, and rest were the four powers. Yeah, so that is a four, four power, yes, four interdot. So I, I thought, we thought, is that what we're to think about as the four antidotes in this chapter or the four thoughts that turn the mind? No, no, this is like, here is a talking about these four powers, this one. Not talking about the four, four thoughts, of course, like you, without the four thoughts, you don't have enthusiasm. So the first part is like, just you begin a session, explain the we have to create enthusiasm like the cause is like talking about this just impermanent precious human body so this kind you know it is specifically talking about four thought but it's just the main point is enthusiasm is arise from the four thought meditation okay and i and another translation i found for rest it says letting go yeah letting go that's a good yeah that was in another translation and i thought um just to can um get going good tomorrow i mean another thing you said about 32 was that's where it changes uh from contemplating the positive ways to enhance enthusiasm yes. right yes we're still on that tomorrow yes. yeah, yeah. Well, we already actually like talk about uh, first you know, uh, is uh, introduction already talked that it's a 32. Yes, yes. Mm. So then, then starting is more, you know, extensively explain. 33 is first one is uh, we explain about uh, aspiration. So this always uh, more is uh, aspiration explain. So then goes like just one by one slowly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Anyone has a questions? Uh, I have a question. Uh, it's, it is just like uh, if uh, God realms is a, is. I, I understood it's a uh, lower realm than human beings. No, no, because all realms are, it's, uh, it's a high, <laughs> not lower realm. I'm so, so yeah, higher realm, but uh, but uh, practicing Dharma and awaken, uh, we can awake, but uh, go to uh, higher realm, you mean? Uh, no, uh, sorry. It's the, uh, oh, uh, awaking is uh, human being can awake, but God cannot. Yes. Uh, awake, like like to get uh, a Buddha. Uh, God realm cannot be enlightenment. This is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Specific here is talking about uh, the this gods is a, the gods realm has many different kind there, but some gods could be, but I don't know. So mm -hmm. in some area, the gods cannot be because okay. they don't uh, desire pleasure things. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, that's my question. Yeah, hi higher realm, realms than human yeah. beings, but they don't... God realm, formless, form God, form God's realms, formless God realms. So I think this is talking about desire God realms. Mm. Mm. Okay, yeah. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so then we're going to do the dedication, right? Uh, yes, um, yeah. Do you want me to share it, Debbie? Yes, can you share? Yes. yes. Kimpola, can can you give um, can you allow me to share, please? Make co hosting, yes. Okay, thank you.
Okay, Amanda, please, can you chant? Yes, yes, Kimpala, thank you. Emma Ho, in the center is the marvelous Buddha Amitabha of boundless light. On the right side is the Lord of great compassion. And on the left is Vajrapani, the Lord of powerful means. All are surrounded by limitless Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Immeasurable peace and happiness is the blissful pure land of Dewa Chen. When I and all beings pass from samsara, may we be born there without taking samsara rebirth. May I have the blessing of meeting Amitabha face to face. By the power of the blessings of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions, may we attain this aspiration without hindrance. Teyata pinsa triyawa bodhanaya soha. Bodhicitta, the excellent and precious mind, where it is unborn, may it arise, where it is born, may it not decline, but ever increase, higher and higher. By this virtue, may I achieve omniscience, by defeating all enemies, confusion. May all who travel on the waves of birth, old age, sickness, and death cross the ocean of samsara. As Manjushri, the warrior, realized the ultimate state, and as did Samantabhadra, I will follow in their path and fully dedicate all the merit for all sentient beings. May the teachings of the great Trigongpa Radnashri, who is omniscient, Lord of the Dharma, master of interdependence, continue and increase through study, practice, contemplation, and meditation until the end of samsara. Thank you, Amanda. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. So, good evening. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Nine o'clock. Thank you, Kempo. Thank you, Kempo. Thank you, everyone. See everybody tomorrow. Uh, see you tomorrow. Yeah. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye. Bye.